Domestic bliss. It wouldn't be the same without mains electricity. Nice lamp. The first thing you need to know is how to wire a plug. I know everything comes with a plug attached these days, but you need to know for the exam. A plug cable has two or three wires inside a plastic outer cover. The wires are made of strands of copper twisted together because copper is a good conductor of electricity. Plastic is used for the cover because it's a good insulator. The wires are colour coded. Blue is called neutral, brown is called live, and green and yellow striped one is called the earth. The plug has a tough plastic case, so when you push the plug into a main socket, you don't get fried. The three pins are made from brass because it's strong and a good conductor of electricity. It needs to conduct the electricity from the socket to the wires and ultimately to your hair straighteners. One pin is a bit special. It's linked to a fuse. The fuse has a small wire inside that will break if the current gets too high. It's a safety thing. So instead of blowing up the whole house, you just blow the fuse. The last bit to look at is the cable grip. This is to grip the cable. But it needs to grip the outer sleeve of the cable, not the little wires inside. So which wire goes to which pin? Oh, whatever, just fake it up, see what looks nice. Okay, maybe not. The blue wire goes to the left, the brown to the right, and the striped one at the top. How can you remember that? Take the second letter of the name of each colour to get left, right, and top. So what is the earth wire all about? It's another safety thing. Mains electricity can kill. Here's how the earth wire works. Suppose the live wire inside your cooker comes loose and touches the metal case. And then you touch the case. No! That would be bad. But, cleverly, the earth wire has been connected to the metal case. So the current from the broken live wire flows down the earth, not down you. The earth wire has a very low resistance, and this creates a surge of current. The fuse in the plug breaks, and the cooker is disconnected. No one dies. Fuses, then. Lots of types. Which one do you need? Always go a bit higher than the rating on the appliance. So if your device is labelled 3 amps, then use a 5 amp fuse. And if it's labelled 10 amps, then what should you use? If it's 10 amps, then you need a 13 amp fuse. If you put a 3 amp fuse in a 10 amp appliance, then it'll blow as soon as you turn it on. Somewhere at home, you'll find the box where electricity comes into the building. This box has fuses or circuit breakers, which are another safety thing. Circuit breakers work in a different way to fuses, but do a similar job. If the current goes above a set limit, the electromagnet pulls out the iron bolt and that opens the switch. Power is measured in watts. Power equals volts times amps. So a CD player using 5 amps from mains electricity at 230 volts will use 1,150 watts of power. Above 1,000 watts, we use kilowatts. So 1,150 watts is 1.15 kilowatts. In the exam, you might be asked which fuse to use in certain cases. For example, which is the best fuse to use with a 1.15 kilowatt electric fire at a potential difference of 230 volts? First, we need to work out the current. We can use the formula, but it works in watts, remember, so first, change kilowatts to watts. Do the division and you get 5 amps. So which fuse do you need? If you went for a 5 amp one, it'd keep blowing. You need lucky 13 in this case. Electricity comes in two flavours, DC and AC. Mains electricity is AC. That stands for alternating current. It changes direction 50 times a second. Now that is a lot of alternating. But apparently it helps. DC is direct current. It flows in one direction only. No alternating. It's the kind of current you get from batteries. The bulky plug on mobile chargers converts mains electricity from AC to DC to charge your phone. Nice pizza! <laughs>